and welcome everyone to the Henry Schein Dental Business Institute webinar series. My name is Heather Colicchio and I'm the founder and president of the American Association of Dental Office Management. It is my pleasure to be here today to host this webinar as part of the DBI series uh, for you. Our guests today are Dr. Nicholas Papapetros, uh, who I will be referring to for ease of use as Dr. Nick and Jennifer Stedman. Uh, Dr. Nick is the, Jen said, the big kahuna of New England Dental Partners. His official title is President and CEO. Jennifer is the Director of Operations of New England Dental Partners. They are located based in Boston, Massachusetts. And um, Jennifer, let me add, I've known Jennifer and Dr. Nick for many years. I started the association 16 years ago, and we are now the largest professional organization in the country for dental office managers and practice administrators. I've known uh, Jen and Dr. Nick for many years, and uh, Jennifer, in addition to being uh, the director of operations for Dr. Nick, she is also the founder of the Boston chapter of ADOM, one of our um, most thriving chapters, and that's really where our members get to meet and network on a local level. And I might add, Jennifer is uh, also a master within ADOM, meaning she's attained the highest level of certification available for a dental practice administrator. And she also happens to be the 2020 Practice Administrator of the Year. She shares that title with Debbie Evans. And that means that they were chosen to be the best of the best of the best in dental practice management. So I am very confident uh, in my guests today I'm going to let them each say a, a quick hello and tell you a little bit more, uh, Dr. Nick. Sure. Well, thank you, Heather, and uh, thank you, Henry Schein. Um, I was actually lucky enough to participate in the uh, Henry Schein Dental Business Institute. I thought it was a great experience, and, and I would certainly recommend it to uh, to anybody that's thinking about it. Um, yeah, no, it's. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Uh, Jen and I have worked together for over 10 years. And uh, I have to say that, you know, ADOM's been a large part of her growth, and uh, I want to thank you for that. So, uh, no, I'm excited and hoping to share some information with uh, your viewers. So, thank you. Thank you. And, and Jennifer, I said it before we started today, but I need to reiterate, your hair is on point, Jen. I mean, it just looks <laughs> fabulous. So, beyond that, though, tell everyone a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so um, I come from a clinical background as well. So I was a dental assistant, dental hygienist, and uh, fortunately enough, Dr. Nick gave me an opportunity to you know work work at the desk, <laughs> and it turned into a, a whole lot more than that. So um, we've added practices, built practices, um, and now we're we're at thirteen practices to date, which is wonderful. And ADOM has definitely been a huge part of that. It was definitely a turning point in my career. And I think it definitely helped to develop um, our communication and just bring back a lot of things to our team and just help us to grow. So I, I love doing these things and helping to um, hopefully help help others too, especially with the fun topic of uh, COVID. <laughs> well, that brings us to our topic today, which is the critical <laughs> role of the practitioner and the office manager relationship in the era of COVID-19. And it's always been our belief at ADOM that you can have the best clinician um, ever. And that's great, but you also need to have a really good business sense to make your practice or practices in this case um, profitable and successful because at the end of the day, dentistry is a small business. And what we have found at ADOM is that in practices where the dentist owner and the office manager have a very strong partnership of sorts, working relationship, that really allows the practice to go to the next level. And this year, 2020, um, there's certainly been a year of surprises and curveballs, but I can tell you that, that New England Dental has really not only survived, but thrived during this year. So we're, we're really gonna use you to kind of as a case study to try and understand how you you know, got through this, how you got through it ahead of the game, and what role did your relationship really between the two of you played in all that, and what other dentists, because I know most of our audience say are dentists, what hopefully other dentists can learn um, in how to maximize, leverage, and maximize their relationship with the person running the practice. 
to make it really as successful as it can be. And in some practices, uh, that is the office manager, some it's the practice administrator, here it's the director of operations. So whoever that person is who's handling the business end of things for you, dentist, this is really for you to understand how to focus on that relationship just to make everything better. And today's going to be very um, conversational. It's just going to be a discussion. And what I've found is that, you know, at Adam, we're very good about bringing in the best speakers in dentistry and the best consultants in dentistry. But it always seems true that our members learn the most from one another. And typically, this time of year, I'm getting ready to see both of you at Yankee Dental, which is always a highlight for me, which won't be happening this year. Yeah. And I know so many of us have lost that opportunity to connect um, with our peers and to learn from them. So I'm hoping that, you know, through our discussions today, we can really bring that home for a lot of, a lot of the dentists listening. Um, so the first thing we want to talk about are the roles in the practice. So Jen, I want you, if you would, please, what do you think is the role of the office manager or practice administrator in the dental practice? So I think, you know, whether what you were saying, Heather, so regardless of what your title is, if you're office manager, you have a practice manager, director of operations, it's really the person that's really running the business in the office, right? What <clears throat> I think what we found to be successful is when the, the owner doctor can really focus on the patients and the clinical side of dentistry and then have that relationship with the practice manager um, to, you know, to work on goals and, and, and build from there. But, you know, regardless, I think everyone's role is a little bit different. It's also depending on the size, right? If you have one, you know, one doctor, one hygienist, one assistant, and your practice manager or an admin team member, it's going to look a lot different than when you have you know, five doctors in an office and, you know, multiple hygienists or when you're part of a bigger group um, with us. So we, we have a practice manager at each location. And then we have a regional manager that oversees the region and then myself and an assistant director of operations. It, it takes a, it takes a village, right? <laughs> when you get to be that, when you get to be that size, but really it's, you know, it, it's someone that's, that's helping to run that business. So really focusing on patients, practice, the team, looking at, you know, the insurance side of it, credentialing, it's, it's, it's never ending, right? Marketing, mm -hmm. <laughs> community involvement. There's so many different things that go into, it. and it's really someone that's taking really like an, an ownership role, right? They're not the owner, but they are taking an ownership role in that practice to really help it to thrive and, and grow. You know, when I had, um, I have two, two little girls and I, you know, I always said, you know, I, at the time when it was just four offices, I said, I don't have two kids. I have six, <laughs> you know, it's because it's really, you know, you're trying to help them to grow and, um, helping everyone to learn and just empowering them. Right. So it's, there's, there's so many things that come into it, but it is really dependent on size and really what the owner doctor um, wants their wants of their practice manager too, and that's where open and honest communication and expectations definitely helps to identify that and what the role will be. That's very important. I, I would agree with that, Jennifer. And I've always been amazed at the level of investment that ADOM members have, in particular, in their practices, as if you said they were owners. And it really, they're not. And a lot of them aren't even bonused on production. It really is just. They want to see their practices do well. So mm -hmm. dentists, if your manager is not a member of ADOM, hopefully there, it's, it's dentalmanagers.com. Hopefully there's a link somewhere. But we really try um, to nurture that in our, our members. They come to us with that kind of investment mentality. And they, they succeed when the practice succeeds. And I think that's a great point, Jennifer. So Dr. Nick, what does having a, a CEO type office manager enable um, a dentist or, you know, ha how does that help? How does that help with leadership, with, with everything, being an effective clinician? You've really, you know, helped give the reins to Jennifer. And that, that is a, something I find too, is that a lot of dentists give the title, but not the authority. You've given the authority and I have to commend you for that because that's something some dentists have trouble with. Um, but how has that come back to you? How has having a CEO type running your practice benefited you and the practice overall? Well, you know, I, I've been very fortunate. I, you know, Jen is a, a wonderful individual. And, and, you know, how it's easy because it's Jen. Um, but I, what I think is, you know, we, as dentists, we go to dental school. We, you know, we don't go to business school. So, you know, I think some of the hesitation on some doctors is that 
well, they're the doctor, they should know better. Well, I have to tell you, just from the first time that uh, Jen went to Adom and came back uh, from, from San Diego, I mean, you know, she's, you know, people are doing this, people are doing that. Like, you know, she had all these great ideas and, um, you know, we, we ran with them. It's, you know, it was her ideas and, but it made sense to me. I didn't, you know, I don't, I didn't know everything. And sometimes you don't know what you don't know. And so um, I think having uh, Jen allowed me to be, focus more on clinicals, you know, treating patients, uh, delivering the best care. You know, when you have your hands in somebody's mouth and, you know, the, the front desk is coming up and asking you, you know, you know, there's an emergency and, you know, the suction's down and all these other things, like, you, you know, it's hard to focus and do your work. And so having somebody like Jen, you know, you could just focus on dentistry. And I, we have such a great relationship that it, it just, it makes it easy. Um, but even focusing on business, you know, um, her, her network of people, you know, what are, what are other people doing? You know, what's the going rate for a hygienist? What's the, you know, even supplies, you know, what are people using for PPE? We can't get N95 masks. I mean, just the, the network that Jen has built up over the years has, it just allows us to function so much, yeah, just very easy. Um, there's not a lot of, you know, running around, you know, it's, all right, what do you think? What do you think? And so, you know, it, it just works. And so, you know, as, as a business leader, I mean, you have to build your team, you know, you need your accountant, your lawyer, your, all these other things. Well, you know, I have Jen and Jen is, you know, a, a integral part of, of, of how I work and operate and, um, so it's, it's, it's great. I mean, I think it's, you know, I think doctors need to have a, um, uh, not really soul searching, but, but, but think about what do they want? Like if you could design your practice, you know, I don't know too many doctors that say, you know, oh, I can't wait to get that payroll done or, you know, I mean, so, you know, if you have somebody that you can empower to do these things and, and, you know, sometimes, you know, dentistry can get mundane and, but when you have other things to do and manage, I think it, you know, it gives you self-worth and, you know, you grow as an individual. And so, you know, you know, it's funny when, you know, I don't know which came first, the chicken or the egg, when you were saying how, you know, you're empowering people at ADOM, but is it, is, you know, you almost have to have that forward thinking doctor to, to allow somebody to attend ADOM. So it's like, you know, how does the person get there? You know, I mean, some people pay on their own and then they come back to the doctor. Maybe they see the value or it's, you know, having attended, you know, an ADOM meeting. I mean, I, you know, I'm surprised more doctors don't go. I really think it, you know, it was great for me to see, you know, what, you know, what you're teaching. I learned things, um, but just the excitement, you know, to me, that was phenomenal that, you know, I go to so many dental meetings and, you know, people walk around with their heads down and, you know, it's, you know, the ADOM meeting, I mean, it's exciting. You're, you're, everybody's, the energy in the room is just phenomenal. So anyway, so, but, but Jen is a special person. I'm very lucky. So I, I you know, it's hard for me to, you know, everybody should have a Jen. So <laughs> everybody should, everyone, we're lucky at ADOM to have her. And yes. just for reference, the conference that you're talking about, Dr. Nick is the ADOM conference. And if you're watching this and you want to learn more, it's, uh, it's ADOM, A-A-D-O-M, ADOMconference.com. And Shine has been such a big supporter of that event through the years. So thank you for that to Henry yeah. Shine. And, you know, Dr. Nick, like you were saying, you, you as the owner, I mean, I'm, I'm a small business owner, you as the owner, need to invest in your team. And I don't mean just the office manager as a dentist, it's, it's the assistant, yep. the hygienist, you know, the, the entire business team, the more they know, the better your practice is. It's an investment in yourself and in your practice. And I, I, I think once dentists realize that and that light bulb goes off, it's it's yep. easy from there. So I have to say the the one thing that, that, you know, they have these wonderful models that you can tweak, you know, advertising, salaries, all these different things that, you know, basically trying to increase productivity or you know, helping the bottom line. But, but uh, team education and marketing were probably the two biggest factors in creating, you know, uh, a great practice. So, you know, it's one of these things that, you know, I know in the past, you know, advertising for dentistry, you know, but the world is changing, but, but staff education was one of the, one of the major contributors to, 
increasing the bottom line. So, I mean, you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they're not, nobody's going to those events because they're fun. All right, Adam is fun, but no one's going because that's what they feel like doing. They're going to be better at their career and better for your practice. And that goes for everyone on, on your team. So I'm a big advocate of investing in uh, team education for, for all small businesses, for you know every everyone who you employ. That's if they're willing to go uh, and learn for your business, why wouldn't you? Yep. Okay, so we're gonna switch gears a little bit and I'm gonna bring up the COVID um, pandemic. <laughs> so, which really is, is you know, the, the crux of what we're talking about here, we've kind of established um, some things, but now let's talk about COVID. And Jen, how has your role changed since, since COVID? Hit, hit us back in, in March, let's say. Yeah, so, you know, it was definitely a challenge at the beginning, right? So um, for, you know, for us, I think one of the, one of the challenging things is we were, we were so excited. We had two new offices come on board March 1st, one on March 6th, and then in Massachusetts, everything shut down on the 17th. So we were still open for emergencies, but um, we weren't in the office, you know, treating treating every patient. So uh, it, everything came to a screeching halt, you know. But in that time, one of the things that that I really found, um, you know, to be important is even more so is the ability to adapt and the ability to adapt at a more rapid pace, we'll say, because, you know, where before you might have, you know, okay, sit down, take a breath, you know, look at everything, make a decision. You still had to do that. You still had to, you know, look at everything because we all know there was a million webinars. There was information left and right from the state, from the federal government, from the CDC, from everywhere. You really had to, you know, compile everything together, review it very quickly and just come to a decision and just, and do it. Right. And, and really stick by it until, until something else changed. <laughs> um, but you really had to adapt and um, communication is even more key now, even more so. <clears throat> it always has been, but, you know, being transparent is huge. You know, tell the team, look, you know, this is, this. we all know this is the struggle, right? PPE was a massive struggle. And I know a lot of offices donated their PPE to local hospitals too, right? For the, for, you know, for everyone on the front lines. And then when it was time for them to open, they didn't have any supplies. So it was, it was, it was very challenging, but you know, the ability to adapt was huge. I know there was a lot of practice managers out there that didn't have any training on infection control. They didn't know, right? They didn't, they had, um, you know, clinical team members that, you know, that did that or the doctor did that. And all of a sudden it was like, well, you know, everything was out there. <laughs> and I know for, for me, um, that's when I was getting my mastership from ADOM and it actually came at a perfect time because <laughs> it was a great refresher. So I had the clinical experience. I was fortunate to have that. So I understood infection control and the disease process, but, you know, taking the courses for the, for the mastership through the Dale foundation, just really enhanced that. And I know a lot of other um, members of ADOM that were getting their masterships of the same thing. I'm like, wow, timing was everything <laughs> with that. But we're able to share a lot of that information with our with our team too, you know, and really just try to help to ease their minds. You know, look what we're doing has has worked. It is working. You know, it's just COVID was new. You know, we we didn't really know too much about it. We, you know, sometimes it's 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 just it's it was definitely a challenge. But um, I think those are the biggest things. You know, so really to adapt mm -hmm. immediately, more rapidly, and. Um, definitely learning a lot more about infection control for a lot of different practice managers. So, um, but yeah, that was, those are the big things really. Okay. Wonderful. Moving to both of you, I guess, what makes your business relationship work? Um, and how do you build trust and, and you can frame it during a pandemic or, you know, pre pandemic, I guess pre pandemic is probably a good place to start because you would not have gotten through the pandemic if you didn't have that in, in, in place first. So how, how over the years of working together, have you built trust in each other? In, in examples? So I'm going to start because, um, I, I really, you know, uh, you know, Jen had worked for me as a hygienist and she was an excellent hygienist and, and she, she ended up, ha was in a car accident, couldn't do hygiene for a while. 
Um, but, but she was, you know, she was a great employee. And even back then, I, you know, the way I want, you know, sort of my, my core values and how I worked and things like that. So I'd purchased another practice and I had, Jen was helping me manage it because she knew how I worked. And so you ask how did our business relationship start really from, you know, one day she comes to me and says, well, I, I think, um, I think the, the person at the front desk is stealing, <laughs> stealing money. And I'm like, wow. All right. So, you know, we sort of looked into it and sure enough, she, this person was, and, but, you know, it's, it was time, uh, you know, so she's, we've worked together now 11 years. Um, it's almost like by, you know, each circumstance or, you know, you know, one thing after another and, and trusting each other and commun- communicating back and forth. And so really it was, you know, it, it, it didn't happen instantly, but it happened over time. And, and we both sort of grew. I mean, we both, I had one practice, then we had two, and then we had three and sold one, bought, bought one more, built another one, you know, so it was just over time. And it, you know, the joke is now I say to Jen, it's like, I just stay out of your way and let, let her do what she wants. Cause you know, I'm just the dentist now, you know, I just, I, I, I like to treat patients. So, <laughs> so anyways, I, you know, I think, you know, and Jen could speak on it too. I mean, but that's, that was sort of my feeling that just really time and trust, respect, you know, just bouncing ideas off of each other. And so, you know, yeah. Jen, I don't know what you think. No, definitely time was a huge, you know, was a huge part of it. And, you know, when I think back of when we first, you know, started working together in the interview and, you know, <laughs> and then all of that, but um, we, you know, we, one thing that I know Dr. Nick, he's a very wise man. I'll say that. And he told me before, he said, you know, make sure you take a moment to pause and reflect. And one thing, you know, that I, I always reflect on is, you know, the great relationship that, that Dr. Nick and I have, and it was, it was built on that foundation of trust. And, um, but we, we also sat down and we talked about, you know, what our core values were and what, what he wanted, you know, for the practices to, you know, what he wanted it to look like, what his goals were. And, um, you know, we, we aligned together and we really just communicated and that's a huge, 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 huge part of it. And I know, um, we had, you know, we had team culture camp. So we had Judy K Mosoff come in with our team and it wasn't just working with the team, but it was working with us too, you know, because really that's the, that's the foundation, right? Culture starts, um, you know, from, from the leaders and, and that's what, you know, every doctor is a leader, every practice manager is a leader, you know? So, um, it's, it's really important to, to recognize that and to really um, build on that. So I think even with, with all of our team too, I think how we build trust within them, um, even, you know, for us is, you know, practicing what we preach, right. And really, um, you know, exemplifying what, what our core values are and what we stand for and really just having integrity, right. So, one of the things you hear me say communication a lot. <laughs> so during COVID, we had um, weekly what we called coffee breaks with our team. And our one rule was no work talk allowed. And we just literally just had fun. You know, we had a we recognized that there was a huge shift. Usually we see each other more than we see our own families. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, I have a new, I have new coworkers now. <laughs> um, and we just took time and you know, we, we played games, we had, you know, family feud and just, you know, name that tune and all different stuff just to be together, just to be as people. Cause we were all missing that. And that definitely helped, I know, helped with our team because they, that we recognize, you know, we, we needed to communicate with everyone. You couldn't be quiet. So obviously we had work talks too, but that definitely helped to build the trust because the team got to know us even more. So as, as people, as humans, you know, not a, not a title. And I think that's, what's really important is just building that relationship with your team. So they know who you are, not what. Mm -hmm. I love that. What advice would you give, you know, if there's a dentist watching who has an office manager that's been in their practice for some time, they're looking to build the trust. What might be a good concrete example of something they could do to, you know, to earn the trust and vice versa, something, 
in the practice? Would you, would you recommend goal setting or, you know, what, what, what would be a good sort of thing for them to say, let's do this and then I'll have more, more trust in what you're doing. Well, well I think just initially is maybe sit down and have a, a lunch together and just talk about, you know, expectations and, you know, some goals and, you know, ask questions, you know, a lot of times we talk, but maybe we should ask more questions, you know, what, what are they seeing up front? You know, what are patients like about the practice? What don't they like about the practice? Maybe, you, you know, again, just try and, you know, I think the doctor has to have some vision. You, you can't just start, you know, in the atmosphere, but, you know, it's also the staff has to, you know, the team members have to come up with ideas too that, you know, what, what would, you know, the front desk person like to do? Maybe they, you know, geez, I could talk, you know, I used to be an accountant or something, you know, I could help you with payroll or, you know, everybody has, you know, you know, one of the philosophies we have is, you know, if you're a good employee, we'll find you a seat on our bus. So it's just a matter of trying to figure out who is, you know, is it the, you know, is it the current front desk person? Maybe it's not, maybe she's great at, you know, collecting money and answering the phone, but maybe that's not your, you know, it could be an assistant, honestly, that might be your future office manager or, you know, somebody else. I mean, so again, it, I think it starts from the doctor, but, you know, you have to communication, sit down. And I, I think a lot of, um, even just with team members, you know, I, I think I know Jen will tell you, I mean, you know, she's had lunch or a meal with a snack with every team member. I mean, we're talking, you know, 160 people, you know, so it's, you know, it's sometimes you just got to take time out of the day. You can't do it, you know, five minutes in between patients, you know, you'll need to set aside some time to be able to just, you know, talk through some things. And, and it's very surprising how things come up. And um, again, it's just communication. And then, you know, hopefully, you know, one thing works out right, then the next thing will work out right. And, you know, one building block at a time. So I think it's sure. just know. like any other relationship, right? I mean, all right. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like, you. Yeah. You meet your spouse, right? You go out on one date, two dates, three <laughs> dates. I mean, it. You know, most people don't get married after the first date, so you know it's. You know, it does. It just it, it takes time, confidence, trust, respect. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, if 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 doc, you know, if staff members don't trust the doctor, well, it's it's not going to work out. And if doctors don't trust team members, it's not going to work out. So, and and I have heard you both now say the word communication quite a bit. Yeah. How do you two communicate? Do you have one-on-one meetings together or yeah. what is that like? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, we, I mean, we probably talk daily, maybe several times a day. Um, we're at a point now where it's, you know, we almost know what each other's thinking. So because we've worked together for so long, but sometimes it's just, you know, right. This is what I'm thinking. Does it make sense to you? Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's a collaboration. It's not just uh Jen, do this, or, you know, Dr. Nick, you should do that. You know, it's, well, this is what I'm thinking, or, you know, I I try and be the big idea guy. So Mm -hmm. what if we, you know, is there some way we could do this? You know, and Jen, she'll say, okay, well, we could do it this way, that way, whatever. So it's. It sounds like you two are in constant communication, like throughout the day, throughout the week. It's not just a scheduled set time. It's just a constant exchange. uh, we do have certain times that we have, but it's usually a bigger group. So we typically have like a weekly, you know, sort of like, uh, you know, SMT meeting, you know, the strategic management or, you know, sometimes it'll be an ops operational meeting, but, you know, just can, you know, as a, as a general rule, you, you know, we just talk daily just on, okay, what, you know, how's it going today? Well, you know, is there any issues or not? And, yeah, so and I think one one thing for for Dr. Nick and I, but even for our teams, we're we're always available. And I think one thing that that I found that I always, you know, that I kind of laugh at, but at the same time, like our team always says, they're like, oh, I don't want to bother you. I know you're busy. I'm like, I'm never too busy. I'm never too busy. Right. And I think, you know, even, you know, going out, you know, Dr. Nick was talking about like I've gone out, you know, to breakfast with team members, coffee, lunch you know, one thing that I've learned during that time is not only, you know, do I get to know them, but they get to know me. Um, and they really, you know, it helps them to understand why we're doing things too, when they know who you are and what you stand for. But during that time, and I would, I would highly recommend any doctor or any practice manager, when you're meeting with a team member, 
turn off your phone and just be present and listen because team members will tell you so many different things and they'll have wonderful ideas, but they might not say it in a larger group. So if they have your ears, just listen, ask questions and listen, don't make statements, just listen. And it's, it definitely goes a long, long way. Yeah. Great advice. So we're going to talk a little bit about the day to day. How do you implement change management in your practice? And you have a, a very large practice. Uh, so change is probably not easy, um, but you do it successfully. How, how do you do that? What, is, what does change management look like for both of you? So I, I think, um, Dr. Nick, I'll jump in on this one first. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I think, um, you know, for us, so mainly, you know, one of the main things I focus on is operations of the, of the company, of, our, of the group, right? So um, the reason why we've been successful is because of our team. It's not because of me. It's not because of Dr. Nick. It's because of the team. It's everyone. So one thing that that's helped to make us successful is the meetings that we have, right? So um, in those meetings, we'll we'll set an agenda. You know, we'll review certain things. We always have an open mic at the end, so anyone can talk about it, right? But during those um, meetings is when we'll discuss things and we'll ask everyone's opinion, you know, and, and get everyone's feedback. Um, and then we'll go from there. So usually on those calls, like, you know, we'll have the practice managers on there, um, our regional managers, and then those are the team members that implement, right? So if, you know, if you're a, a you know, single, your single practice, you know, um, with one doctor owner, right? Or maybe you have, you know, associates or partners, you would, you know, have that meeting with your practice managers, right? Have your meeting with your, with your practice manager, and then they can help to disseminate a lot of that information, but that's also going to empower them um, and really have the team recognize that, um, that they have a, you know, they have an ownership, an ownership role um, with, with the team, right? So um, that's one thing that I definitely feel has, has helped us is just our team. We're very, very fortunate to have the team that we have. And um, yeah, very blessed. We could not have gotten through this year <laughs> without without the team that we have. That's that's for sure. So, so even just um, Jen's on a, has a great practice of when we disseminate information that a lot of times, you know, we, we may make a, you know, say a policy change. But what we typically do is we'll roll it out to all the practices at the same time so that everybody gets the information at the same time. It's not, you know, one week, one practice knows something. And then two weeks later, we tell another practice, things like that. So we're very, you know, very careful as to how information is presented and the timing of it. And so I think that's helped us uh, just trying to get, you know, everybody on the same page at the same time. Um, and, you know, just little things like that that have helped us, uh, again, just how do we implement change? Well, you know, one of the ways is if something does change, it changes for everybody at the same time, right. not yeah. one practice or another practice, you know. So, again, it's – and then that way if people have questions, you know, listen, we all have different learning styles. And so, you know, one practice manager might get it right away and another one might not. And so we have a lot of collaboration between the, you know, practice managers. You know, they don't, have, they don't have to go to Jen. They don't have to go to Toledo. You know, they can go to each other. It's almost like, and, and we've seen, you know, certain practice managers sort of gravitate towards each other. So it's almost like a team working. So it's nice. We, we try and encourage, you know, uh, people to speak up. If you need help, ask for help, but also to offer help. Hey, does anybody, you know, somebody's done doing some sort of, you know, tracking a report or whatever. Hey, you know, I'm done. Can you need any help? So again, it's, it's, um, uh, you know, we just try and be cognizant of, you know, the timing of things and, and how we disseminate information and um, try and make it as clear as possible. Right. And, and you both mentioned the dissemination of information. And what I have found working with so many practices over the years is that those who are very successful speaking about the Dr. OM relationship is that the team knows when the office manager is saying something, it's come from the doctor. It's already been you know, right. discussed and vetted and agreed upon. It's not something that they then have to go and say, well, I have to check with the doctor on that. Yep. They respect the relationship and that you, yep. as as the manager, um, 
it, it's as good as talking to the doctor. Right. And I think when that, you know, system is in place, yeah. communication flows right. and, and it's received much yeah. better as well. Yeah. You're absolutely right, Heather. I mean, that's, you know, in, in sort of in our early relationship that, you know, we would get, you know, Jen would say something and they would run to me and say, you know, is this true? Or, you know, and, and you know, and honestly, as the doctor, like, you know, I've always been having to answer questions and, you know, it was hard in the beginning to just say, uh, I'm sorry, you'll have to go see Jen about that. Or, you know, uh, you go bring that up with Jen or, you know, so there is a little bit of a transition and the doctor really has to empower wh whoever this person, you know, office manager, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and it, you know, I, we had to have a meeting to say, Okay, from now on, if you have an issue, you got to go to Jen. You can't come to me anymore. Just to, you know, clear the air. Like, there's no more, like, you know, I'm going to, you know, pit mommy against daddy. You know, yeah. it's like, nope. <laughs> you know, and, and it took a little bit. It was a, you know, it was a big transition, but. Uh, and that that is true. I think, you know, the dentist and the manager have to communicate that together to the team. Yeah. That what the manager says is <laughs> good as yeah. gold because yeah. she's, she, he is speaking on behalf of the doctor. Yeah. Um, because sometimes it's not it's not possible to do to do anything together, right? Yeah. Especially yeah. now in the in the era of COVID, you can't you can't always be physically present, you know. So that's one one big thing that we found. So even you know if we're gonna you know institute a change, we send out an announcement to every single team member. Every team member gets the same announcement. All hundred and. 20 yeah. was it right 160 no. 50, yeah. 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 Like 150. yeah so everyone you know all the practice managers get the information first so they can disseminate it but then there's an announcement that goes to everyone so it's written so they can go back they can review it mm -hmm. so we've really thought about the process a lot um and it's it's definitely helped us to to progress because man there's been there's been a, a lot of change this year <laughs> There has, and, and having a system like this in place is mm -hmm. so foundational because we don't know what the next surprise will be, what the yeah. next challenge will be. So yeah. it's important to have your, your foundation laid. And, you know, I know a lot of dentists are hesitant to, like you said, you had to come together and have that meeting to announce to the team, yeah. go to Jennifer. And I know some, not all, some dentists are hesitant to yeah. hand that over, but I would imagine it takes a lot of heat off you as the dentist, right, to have that buffer. Um, I agree. No, it's great. No, I, I agree with you. And I, I, you know, I'm, I'm surprised more doctors don't do it, but. Uh, if you no. ever want to take a vacation and not have to worry about the practice, empower your practice manager. There you go. That's, that's, <laughs> that should be enough incentive. There you go. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> so this is for both of you again. What has been your biggest challenge regarding change management during this unprecedented time? Because things were happening so quickly, what mm -hmm. what challenge have you encountered? Well, uh, so I, I think um, so. So really, we you know we were worried about uh, team safety. So for us, that was you know in the beginning, it was you know acquiring PPE. You know, what, you know, can we do we have enough PPE? What's the office going to look like? What's the work <laughs> environment going to? I mean, you know, a lot of that was you know very strictly choreographed, you know, we were closed for two and a half, three months. So um, that, that was a big challenge. And, you know, configurations of offices, some, you know, whether the rooms could be closed, not closed, you know, it was just a, uh, just a logistical nightmare. Um, but as a team, we came up with ideas, you know, whether it was aerosol reduction and, you know, um, the machines, the uh, PPE, you know, whether we could open windows or not. Some offices you could open windows, some offices you couldn't. So all these different things were, you know, we really had to sit down and luckily as a, as a group, Jennifer, but we have, you know, we have a person that helps with IT and facilities. So getting, make sure we had remote access to computers. Um, uh, Talita, we designed a, uh, uh, team videos, donning and doffing equipment. What's the office going to look like? You know, our uh, 
web person and, and a media person was sending things to patients. This, you know, the office is going to look different just so you know what it's going to look like when you get here, you know, this is what the team's going to look like. And so, you know, it, it was being able to have everybody come together and figure out sort of whatever your expertise was, but to be able to put that all together um, and be able to deliver it to the team mm -hmm. as well as to the patients. I mean, that's really, you know, our, you know, one of our tenants is, you know, providing exceptional uh, patient care. So how do we do that? Keep them safe. But clearly, you know, the staff has to feel safe, too. So I don't know, Jen, if you <clears throat> want to add to that. Yeah, no. And I think <clears throat> one of the, that was a, a huge challenge was even, you know, disseminating all the information. So we um, one of our team members made training modules for all of our team that we said, OK, before you come back. We want everyone to review these and review, you know, the admin side and the clinical side. So that way, too, you know, you might have an admin team member that doesn't understand what's going on in the back, but you have a patient calling and they're saying, what are you doing to keep us safe? They need to know, right? They have to be able to understand that and be able to, um, you know, talk very easily and communicate that with the patient. So by them, you know, understanding that even more, it was definitely um, a huge help, but no, that was a challenge. PPE was huge. And I think um, for us, that's when all, you know, the relationships that we've built over the years definitely came into play, right? Big, big time. Mm -hmm. And I know um, Adon was huge in helping with that too. I know, <laughs> you know, you go on the message boards and everyone's like, I got N95s, I got face shields. I, you know, it's, it's, you know, everyone's saying, every, oh, sharing all the information. Oh, go here, go there. You know, this one's making this. And um, it's, it, it was, it was wonderful to do that together, you know, together as a, as, um, and as a, as a tribe on top of it. But I think even, um, a lot of doctors realized what, um, you know, the role of the practice manager, not just in their office, but in multiple, right. Offices across the country. They're like, wow, you're, you're finding that out from who, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, no. And I have to say yeah. that that's, I'm so proud of, of this year because I really saw our members step up in a way that I had never seen before because mm -hmm. the, the opportunity had not been there before, but to really shine as leaders in their practice. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, our community that we have, that we've built really was so tight and so strong. Um, just so, so proud. And another thing I want to add was the PPP. I know PPE was huge, but PPP was a one that came right after it for mm -hmm. so many dental practices. Like, what do we have to do? What paperwork with, and I saw so many managers where they already had the trust of the dentist to say, don't worry, I got this, you know, I got this, I'll take it, take it all. I'll, I'll take it off your shoulders. And again, you know, as a dentist, having that person, that right-hand person is mm -hmm. just great. And I really saw it during COVID, you know, what, what it can do for, for a dentist. Well, even uh, one of the one of the big things too with with COVID, there's not too many dentists that have ever had to lay anyone off, right? You know, so it's do you lay off or do you furlough, and what's the difference, right? That's so that was huge. That we all got a quick huge. education. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> so I know that you know Cedar was a huge part of that, mm -hmm. and you know they have every Tuesday. <laughs> Which are Tuesday. Yeah, yeah every, every Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we were fortunate that we've used Cedar for many years. So mm -hmm. we had that resource there already, but that was even even more and then some. So it was great. But um, that was a huge part of it, too, because it was uncharted waters, especially for that. Right. Layoff, furlough, you know what? You know, it's just PPE, but everyone just stepped right up. So, yeah. Yeah. What has surprised you in your business since the start of the pandemic? What positive, negative, otherwise, what kind of, what, what now that I, we're looking back a little bit, what was a, a surprise for you, good, bad, or otherwise? So, I, I, you know, for, for us, for, for me anyways, you know, we, we, we didn't know what to expect, right? So certainly we saw uh, a lot of our team members step up. Um, we never closed the offices. So, um, we had, a, you know, uh, some people stepped up, assistants, uh, office managers. I mean, you know, they were working, you know, part time to just keep the offices open. Doctors were stepping up, seeing emergencies assistants. So, it, you know, it was nice to see that that um, uh, 
sort of in the, you know, in this unknown epidemic that there were team members willing to step up and, and sort of put themselves in harm's way it was great. Um, the interesting thing is what we've noticed since coming out of it, though, is all the things we did during the closure. So we we updated computer systems, software systems, you know, some like deferred maintenance. So some of the, you know, we replaced some flooring in some of the offices. We, you know, a lot of the things that we could do while we were closed were like, you know, it's going to end. So let's try and get ahead of it. And and honestly, from you know, the day we opened, we, you know, we were off and running and, you know, you know, not over the whole year, but I mean, you know, August, June, July, August, September, October, I mean, phenomenal months, more than, you know, we've had before COVID. So, I mean, it's, you know, I think it's kudos to Jen and our team that we've been able to come out of COVID actually stronger, which was a huge surprise. Um, you know, we've hired, I think, 25 new team members during COVID because officers weren't communicating with their staff. Um, our staff was talking to their, their, you know, colleagues and, you know, well, our office does this and does that. So I think out of the 25, I think half of them were referrals from current employees. And so I think that that speaks loudly to how well we've been able to sort of manage through COVID. So I, I you know, I think it, there's been a lot of positives. Definitely. I mean, yeah, the negative of being closed, but, you know, we, we've, not that we've made up totally, but I mean, we're on track to do do pretty well in 2020, considering we were closed for uh, three months. So, Jen? That's wonderful. Yeah, Jen? <clears throat> I think, you know, some of, our, some of our practice managers had prior clinical experience. They were assistants before. So, right, they still have that hat that they can pull out if they need to. And for me, it was amazing because we did, you know, we we partially furloughed all of our practice managers. We had to, you know, and, you know, some of them that had the assisting background, they're like, you know what, don't worry, I got this. They traveled between all different offices, literally just to work with the doctors to see patients in different practices. It was, it was truly amazing, you know, and just, you know, they're taking pictures with the doctors while they're air, while they're there, like fully dressed in their PPE. And, um, you know, they just tried to make the best of it, you know, and I think, right? When life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. So that's what <laughs> I think that's what we tried to do. But we definitely use that time to our advantage to, to educate, you know, we, like Dr. Nick was saying, we updated compute computer systems. Um, everyone is on the same practice management software. Now um, we had two offices that we had had just joined our team that were still partially on paper charts and they're not anymore. And that was all during COVID. So the team came back and they were ready to go and um, no charts anymore. And it was, you know, it was, um, it was wonderful to see that and just see how excited the team was. And yeah, there were challenges, but man, they're, you know, they're just, they're so strong and so resilient. Like it's, it's, it's just wonderful to, to witness. You know, it's, it's, we're, we're very fortunate, very, very fortunate to, and to be able to see that. That's so inspiring. I have to say, I mean, the question was positive or negative. What surprised you? And you both had these really positive, you know, inspiring experiences to share. So that, that's amazing. And I, I think everyone can take a lesson from that. So Jen, this question is for you. As the ADOM, 2020 Practice Administrator of the Year, one of the two in the entire country. What qualities, and this might be a question for me and Dr. Nick, <laughs> what qualities do you possess, in your opinion, to have earned this prestigious award? And I, I'll actually start, Jen, I won't put you on the spot. <laughs> um, and although I, I don't vote on this, I can tell you that, Jen, you are just a, a pleasure to work with. You are just, um, you know, and, and this, I, I think, should go for every manager and for every doctor watching this, I mean, what Jen does um, for Adam and for her tribe and for her peers is voluntary. This is not her job, it's voluntary. And she does it all with just such a, a willingness and a cheerfulness and that how can I help everyone and make everyone better? How can I make everyone around me better? Um, so I don't know that you can teach that, but um, that that's, that's one for sure. It's just really, how do I help the community? And, Jen, too, I know we've, we've worked on some things. I know when um, 
Adam asks you or needs you to do something, it's as good as done. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to think about it. Jen's got it. You know, the request is made. It's as good as done. So, you know, how, whatever the word is for that, I don't know. Um, I do know. I can't think of it. Um, and you're just, you know, nice to be around. <laughs> Both of you. Like, I'm really going to miss seeing you at Yankee. But, Jen, you're just nice to be around. Um, you can have the best manager in the world. And if he or she is not nice to be around, you're not going to get too far. So, Dr. Nick, what do you what do you say? No, you're absolutely true. I mean, Jen has uh, uh, the ability to, to, you know, make you feel comfortable. You know, she's such a kind person. But, you, you know, I was laughing when you say, you know, you ask Jen to do it and it's as good as done. I mean, that's the way I feel, you know, when you, you're asking about, you know, what's our relationship and things like that. You know, again, I'm, you know, I just stay out of her way. I mean, she just does, you know... You know whether it's her upbringing, her 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 personalities, but you know it's her experiences. Uh, you know she just has um, uh, she just gets stuff done, right? I mean that's what we want. You know things things have to get done, and she does them. And it's not there's no fanfare. There's no um, you know she's not looking for recognition. I mean th these these are things that. Um, you know, she's just a wonderful person. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's great to work with her. Um, I've been her boss and I make jokes that someday she'll be my boss. Um, but you know, it, it's, it's phenomenal. I, you know, she, and what are the qualities? I, you know, I don't know, you know, it's, you know, hardworking, it's, it's empathetic, it's being curious at times. It's, you know, being able to put your head down and just get stuff done. I, you know, you know, you have, you know, is there a certain amount of intelligence? Of course, but, it, you know, it's just being able to relate to people and, 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 you know, listen, you know, that, that, I, you know, that as a male, I guess that's, you know, I'm always learning that, you know, you just have to stop talking and listen, but uh, you know, it's, you know, she's phenomenal. I mean, I, you know, I tease her, I, you know, she should win it every year. And so, <laughs> Um, you know, I don't know. I, you know, what, what can I say? I'm, I'm very proud of what Jen has done and I feel very honored to work with her. And, and this, this award really, um, to me brings, you know, warmth to my heart to realize that other people see her the way I see her. Um, she's just a great person. And, you know, I think it's great that she's gotten, uh, you know, the accolades and then, you know, the, the recognition, but, you know, th this is my world. I mean, this is Jen and, you know, I, I think she's really, you know, deserves it and deserves it every year. And so anyways, I, I guess I'd love to hear her and see what she's going to say, what, what the qualities are. Good luck. Yeah, what are the qualities? Yeah. Yeah. Let me just say, I think Dr. Nick, you said it best. You said she doesn't do it for the recognition, which I believe she doesn't, but the recognition follows because it's, it's just yeah. so, it can't go unnoticed, the things yeah. you do. So not only did you win the award, um, which hopefully we'll be able to physically present to you next year, but you'll also be on the cover of The Observer magazine, um, dropping shortly. And you've been a cover girl before, but this time in the capacity as one of our practice administrators of the year. So the recognition follows. When you when you do a job well and don't expect it, and then it's there, you, you know people notice you. So what do you think you possess? And what do you think you can maybe advise other managers to, um, to copy from you, you know, to be the very best? I think <clears throat> I, I took, you know, I, I wrote some things down to thinking about it, but I think, you know, f for me, you know, I guess it's, it's not really a quality, but like one of the things that I have that is an amazing team and I couldn't do what I do without them, you know? So, for me, that's, that's, you know, that's a, a huge thing, I guess. I don't really possess it, you know, they're not my possessions, but um, that's, that's a, that's a huge part of it. But I think, you know, the other thing is the ability to, to listen and really to be able to help empower others. And I know, um, you know, when, when you guys presented this award, I was in my living room. <laughs> My, my dining room wasn't expecting that um but one of the things that I had said is you know it it only takes one person to to see something in you that maybe you didn't see in yourself and you know one person to help empower you and just to help you grow and we can we can be that person and it's for ourselves or for our team um and I'm very fortunate that for me, that one person was Dr. Nick. He gave me an opportunity 
And I, I ran with it, you know, and he, he said at the beginning, he's like, oh, you're such a glutton for punishment because I, you know, I'm like, I'll take HR boot camp, you know, I'll do whatever we had to do. But, um, you know, I think practice managers out there and, you know, that are, that are listening or doctors that are out there. I think the biggest thing is just empower each other. And at the end of the day, you know, the, you know, COVID is, has been crazy and, you know, there's stuff flying at us and there's, you know, CDC and OSHA and, and all of this, all this other information just being tossed at you and um, really just, you know, sit back and just pause and take a second and process everything. Um, and, you know, just, just listen, you know, and, and communicate and really take the time um, to understand and to get to know others. And, um, when you say you're going to do something, do it, you know, just have, have that integrity. I know I, um, growing up, my dad was a, he was a detective and a hostage negotiator. So, um, that was, (laughs) that was a little challenging growing up, but, you know, it was, it, it was always instilled in me, you know, you, you do what you, you do, you do what you say you're going to do. And you, um, you know, you really, you really listen and you just, just, you know, try to be a, a good person at the end of the day, right? Because at the end of the day, that's all that I really have, you know, <laughs> is, is, um, is what I've, what I've been able to do with the, with, um, with the team and just me, I guess. I have a hard time talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for talking first, guys. Now that like my <laughs> eyes are watering in the process. No. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jen. And okay, so we'll we'll just shift gears a little bit. And I want to know, how do you keep your team on track each day, especially now, especially with 150 employees? Mm-hmm. How do you keep them on track? And also maybe how do you hold each other accountable a little bit? Mm-hmm. So I think starting from the very beginning is in the hiring process, you have to hire the right team members. So one thing that I found is, you know, if if you're hiring, you're in the hiring process and you're interviewing someone. So we're fortunate or we have multiple practices. So if we're looking to hire, say, a hygienist for two offices and we're interviewing multiple people, but maybe candidate A is, is perfect, but she might not be a good fit in the practice that she's applying to. She might be a better fit in another practice, just really knowing and understanding the teams um, is definitely a huge part of it. But look, if you hire the right people and you let them know what the expectation is and take the time to train is huge because sometimes we don't have time to do that, right? At the end of the day, a lot of people don't have time to, to train the team. If you take that time in the process, keeping people on track and keeping the team on track is actually pretty easy um, because you have that foundation and obviously there's, you know, there's checklists and, you know, there's, there's so many different task lists and things that, you know, that you can use, um, but, but really, you know, finding the right, finding the right team on a larger scale. <clears throat> one thing that, that we implemented this year, because our, we did get much larger <laughs> and we grew, um, was we use a, a project management tool. Um, it's called monday.com. So we use that and it really helps us to streamline communication. So say if we have a, you know, one of the offices, say the, the printer isn't functioning or, you know, some, something happens, right? We have a team put in a, put in a request form and we can help with that. Or we have a, you know, if someone needs additional training that goes um, right to me and the assistant director of operations. So we can assist in training of the team members, um, there's so many different things that we have, and that just really helps to keep everything um, on track, and so we can meet deadlines. Um, but really, just making sure that you have the right team, that everyone's on the same, you know, everyone's on the same boat. We're rowing in the same direction. You can get a lot accomplished that way, and everyone really pretty much stays on track. Yeah. Yeah. So do the heavy lifting up front. Get the right people in. And invest the time in training. Yes, absolutely. And, yep. and honestly, Heather, I think. Part of it is, you know, we, we use the analogy of, say, a four-lane highway. So we don't really care what lane you're in, but you can't hit the guardrail and you can't go into the ditch. So, you know, it's, you know, we're all adults, we're all professionals. Like, we, you know, we sort of set expectations. And so, 
you know, we don't really want to micromanage. I mean, we, we, we figure, you know, we are working with professionals and we try and get them the education they need and, you know, the proper tools to do whatever they need to do. But ultimately it's, you know, I think Jen has been uh, phenomenal at really, you know, coming up with this process of, of hiring that, I mean, she just keeps hitting one home run after another. And it, that, that's really what's made it very, not very easy, but easier to, 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 you, to, you know, to manage, I guess, or, you know, how, how does the practice run? I mean, it's, again, she's absolutely right. It's the people, it's educating them, um, expectations, and, and really, and, and not to, you know, if somebody does go off the road, you know, we, we, you know, we sort of explain to them, you know, you can't do that. This is, you know, this is how we expect you to work. And, but, you know, again, if it, you know, we've always tied it back to what's good for the, you know, the patients, the team members, the practice, you know, you, you know, if, if we can sort of satisfy all three, then it's great. If we could satisfy two out of the three, that's great. But if it's only leans towards one or one and not the other two, then it doesn't quite work. So again, it's expectations, you know, our sort of, you know, our uh, core values, it's tight, you know, trust, integrity, positive excellence. You know, once we let people know, like, you know, this is how we operate, you know, it's communication, it's, you know, speak up if you don't know how to do something. You know, we, we, we've hired a lot of people just based on personality and not skills for, for admin, front desk. I mean, you know, we, we had a gentleman I called to make a, a, a reservation for a wedding and I was late with the room blocks. So they were all gone. And so, you know, I think we probably spent a half an hour on the phone and finally he was able to give me the room block, for, you know, give me a room at the room, blo room block price. Hey, that 10 times fast. And, uh, but he was so good on the phone. I said, do you ever think about working in a dental office? Jen interviewed him. He, he, he was hired. He worked for us for a couple of years and then he ended up moving to the West Coast. And the minute he left, new patients to this one practice went down because he was just so good on the phone at, at, at closing, you know, uh, patient, new patients and getting their schedule. And, you know, so, you know, you know, doctors and, you know, everybody else out there that, you know, your next best employee could be working in a restaurant, a bank, you know, we've got a great office manager in one of our practices she used to work at TD bank. You know, these are the things that you just have to look out in the world and see where is the next best, you know, employee, team member, you know. Well, that, that brings me to my next question, Dr. Nick. So you mentioned that 2020, even with, with all the crises and challenges, yep. was a great year for your practice, right? I mean, you're coming out really well, which I, I think a lot of dentists cannot say. Yep. So if you had advice for any dentist watching the call, um, what's your secret sauce? I mean, without giving away any, any trade secrets, what advice would you have for any dentist watching who would like to emulate that and say, I, I really would love to have a practice like this. Sure. You know, again, it's, you know, we, I, we were, Jen and I would make, you know, laughing earlier, but it's like sort of the four C's, like compassion, core values, clear expectations, communication, you know, it's, it has to start with the doctor. Where do you want to be? Do you, you know, do you, um, you know, whether it's, you know, excellent patient care, whether it's conveniency, maybe it's, you know, uh, you know, fees, you know, you want to, you want to have the lowest fees, you want to see as many people, whatever, I don't, you know, but whatever your philosophy is, you know, then you need to be able to communicate that to your team members. And, and once you do that, and people get buy in like, okay, this is what I, you know, feel our practice should be okay. And then you all sort of work towards that goal, but it takes, you know, education, um, you know, you can't, you know, there's not a, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, no, no. I, I, I just want to come back because I, I heard both of you come back to your core values many times in, yep. in this conversation. And so just quickly, cause I know we, we, um, I have to keep an eye on time, but how, how did you, how did that come about? Because you, everything I've heard you say goes back to those core values, yep. um, very much so. So how, what was that process? So, so literally we did a, a, a weekend retreat and it was the, the, you know, at that time, I think it was six principals. So myself, Jen, 
uh, uh, director of uh, finance, mm -hmm. uh, IT, uh, our, our now COO, and we went away for a weekend and we just, you know, we got, you know, uh, dry erase boards and, and, you know, giant post-it sheets. And we just sat there, you know, what do we believe in? What do we, what's our philosophy? What, you know, if you had to choose, you know, what represents your, your, your core values. And we all sort of talked about it and honestly just whittled it down to those, you know, those four core values, you know, type, integrity, positive excellence. Uh, we came up with our, our, I guess our tagline is a, you know, we're New England dental partners, but it's uh, a dentist led, patient centered, team focused. You know, and that's how we did it. We, we yeah. literally sat there for two and a half days and just talked about who do we want to be? What, if we could design an ideal dental practice, what would it look like? You know? Yeah. And would, what I love about that, Dr. Nick, is that the retreat wasn't just the doctors, right? You included yeah. your, your leadership, you included your team members yeah. Yeah. who are stakeholders and, and took their input. And I think, uh, like we talked about, having the manager be a, a, a liaison from the doctor, it's easy to do when you've been there in the room creating it with them. So yeah. I, I think that's a very important lesson. Yeah, I, I, I honestly, I think what, what doctors, typically don't do is take the time to, to not see patients and have the office sit as a group and just talk about what, what do you guys believe in? What do you, what should we do? Or how do we want to function as a group? Or, you know, that's, you know, I, we spend a lot of time. I mean, we have a morning huddle, you know, we have, you know, monthly meetings, we have, you know, typically a, a you know, one or two day, like, you know, whole corporation shuts down and have a meeting. So, you know, it, it's sometimes you just got to take the time to, to figure it out. You know, it's. Well, I'm, you know, I'm doing the math. And if you have 150 employees and Jen has like coffee or snacks with each of them, that's uh, yeah. that's half her year. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much, right? No, I know. But it's time invested. It's, it's, it's time that's well exactly spent. It. Yeah. No. Yeah. So we, we often hear that managers feel that they're underutilizing the dental practice. And, and we talk about this a lot, right? Empowering the manager. Quick tip from each of you. One quick tip. Name something a dentist can do tomorrow to just give the manager a little bit of empowerment that they might not have today. What's something they might be able to hand off? I think if they, if, if they, I think if the, if the doctor sits down and asks the, asks the practice manager, you know, like what is their, what is their stress point? What is their pain points that they're doing right now? And listen, because it might be something that you can come up, you know, together and create a solution. And that's also going to help to empower them because you're asking them what you can do, right? What, what can I do to help or help, help me understand, you know, what, what your, what stresses you have, or, you know, really just communicating and listening is going to go a long, long way. I'll give you a simple one. Whatever he, whatever the doctor doesn't like to do. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, and if they yeah. do it well, then you give them something else you don't like to do. And before you know it, uh, you give everything away. It's great. That is great. <laughs> so we're going to wrap up. And I just would love to hear from you, Dr. Nick. What has 2020 taught you that will lead you to continue with your practice success into 21? It taught me that really having a cohesive team. It, it really was, um, we became uh, better friends, let's say. You know, we, we talked a lot, you know, during COVID, we really were able to just chat. You know, we'd see kids running around in the background in these Zoom meetings. And, you know, it, got, it was nice to see that, you know, our team members are people too, you know, and sometimes it's, you know, I, I saw people with their hair down. I, I didn't even know what some <laughs> one of the hygienists looked like with their hair down. You know, it's it was fun. Um, but, you know, you almost have to plan for the worst going forward. Um, you know, we've purchased some, you know, extra PPE stuff. You know, it's gloves, masks. I mean, you know, everybody's wearing gloves these days. You know, it's uh, at some point there might be a, a supply chain that, you know, we, we can't get gloves. So, you know, we sort of plan for the worst, hope for the best. 
Um, but again, I think a lot of the things that, that we did to set us up to come out of it, you know, um, just thinking ahead, what, what can make us more efficient? You know, what's, you know, one of the things we're thinking of doing is being able to uh, get appointments through the internet. You know, again, just differentiating ourselves from other practices, you know, what, what can we do to, to, to make us stick out, you know, like what, whether it's different procedures, whether it's different, you know, hours, you know, expanded hours, you know, now with COVID, you know, that sort of the nine to five job might go away. And so now people are working later, working earlier, you know, maybe we need to expand hours, keep the offices open more. So, you know, again, it's just taught us to, to think a little differently, prepare for the worst, but hope for the best. Um, and again, just keep doing what we're doing, you know, it just stay in touch with people. Uh, you know, we've been very lucky in hiring a lot of people. We've lost some people just chasing, you know, some salaries, you know, and that's, I don't know how long that's going to sustain it, but I, you know, I think some people are scared and, um, you know, we, we try and just, uh, you know, we take it very seriously. I mean, you know, we have 150, 60 employees. I mean, you know, typically there's a, you know, two, three, four, five people in a family, you know, you extrapolate that out. I mean, we're taking care of 600 people. I mean, that, that's a big responsibility and we don't, we don't take that lightly, you know? So, you know, we, you know, we have a lot of fun. We laugh all day long, but it's very serious. And, and, and we, we treat it as a, as a, as a, you know, a serious group. And, you know, we want to make sure that we survive. And, and so we, we, you know, we're always, I think now we think just a little bit more about, okay, well, what if this happened or what if that happened? Whereas before it was kind of loosey goosey, like everybody was doing well and, we didn't really think too much about it. So now I think we just, you know, we take an extra step and say, okay, what well, is this good for us? Is this not good for us team members? You know, again, it's, it's more important now to have the right team than anything else. I mean, that, that's, we're always evaluating that. Do we have the right team? And so, you know, I, I think, I guess that's what we've learned. I don't know, Jen. Mm -hmm. No, I definitely agree. And I know that, you know, our, the biggest thing that we found is, you know, by having that strong team and by having that foundation, you can really pull together and people step up, right? Because they, they believe in, they believe in what we're doing as a team and they, they trust everyone, you know, so um, really able to pull together because you have, we've had that strong foundation. So I think um, that's definitely helped us this year. And I know that it's going to help us next year too. So. But even, you know, I have to say that this wasn't just us. I mean, we, you know, we took, you know, we knew we were closing the offices. I mean, the first thing I did is I called all of our landlords and I said, listen, we're not going to pay rent for two months. And some were like, yeah, that's okay. And some weren't happy, but we didn't know what was going to happen. You know, we, you know, Henry Shine, I mean, Tom, Tommy McGuire, our rep, you know, he would call us and say, okay, we just got some gloves in, order gloves. Okay, we need to order gloves or... This week, you know, we just got some masks in, like order them before we, you know, before they go out. So, I mean, it was really a, a team effort, you know, whether it was, you know, Henry Shine, uh, like I said, our landlords, um, you know, other vendors, labs, like, you know, listen, guys, we're, we were conserving cash. We just didn't know what was going to happen. And so, um, you know, everybody, you know, knock on wood, you know, the end, by come the end of, of December, we've paid all the rents we were supposed to pay. We've paid all our bills. And so, you know, we're, we're, we're ready to go for two, 2021. Great. That's great. So I just, I want to wrap up and, and you've both shared so many lessons uh, for everyone today. So thank you both. Um, Dr. Nick, what I, I heard you say is empower your office manager. And Jen, I think you said it best that when you empower your office manager, you can take a vacation and not worry about anything, right? <laughs> That's true. So if anyone is still listening. It is, it is. yeah. Take that advice, absolutely <laughs> true. I, I've seen it, I've seen it. So well, you two are both just great examples for everyone out there and what a doctor-manager relationship should look like uh, and keeping that communication open and which benefits your practice and which at the end of the day benefits your patients. So thank you for that. Um, and I also want to thank the Henry Schein um, DBI Dental Business Institute for having us here today to talk about this very important relationship. So, That's awesome. Okay. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Take we care. We enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.